So have you ever had the question of learning martial arts through uh, books? I have had this question uh, for many, many years, since I was very young, up until now, almost 40 years. So probably many people here have uh, somehow similar question or idea, opinion. Yeah, I heard a lot uh, the previous, in the previous session. So I would like to know how you think of this before entering main uh, discussion. So can I ask you a question? Uh, do you, if you believe it's possible to learn martial arts through books, yes. please raise your hands. 50%. Oh, okay. So, so. Is there so-so hands? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If, if, uh, if you, if you don't uh, believe, oh, it's impossible to learn martial arts through books, then uh, please raise, raise your hands. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's great. I was afraid when I asked this question and only one part. <laughs> so, uh, um, so, when I uh, think back of my old age, old days, I was always dreaming of becoming a martial artist, so like you, all of you here. So I don't realize why I was so much fascinated by uh, martial arts at that time. And then later I noticed it, it comes from a uh, martial arts film. So when I was young in the 70s, 80s, there were a lot of Hong Kong film, yeah? Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and so uh, the television series Kung Fu. Actually, the storyline of the film was so simple. So there was ordinary man and uh, you know, very difficulties, uh, learn martial arts, and then become a good martial artist and revenge one, himself on old enemies. But the most fascinating part is not this storyline. The message from uh, these martial arts films that I got was like uh, learning martial arts makes you become a superhero. So, and then, intuitively, I knew the key to learn martial arts is in the manual. So logically, if I find the right manual, then I, I could become a very good martial artist. So I started looking for a manual. So these two manuals, finally, I found. Asking my parents for several years and then uh, and then I started learning this uh, <clears throat> literally day and night. I dedicated myself learning this martial arts and uh, almost uh, one week. But interestingly, I tried one uh, movement and then I forgot when I'm trying the next one. So already like uh, it's very hard to figure out and these things and then uh, the, after one week, I uh, made my conclusion. It's impossible to learn martial arts uh, through books. And uh, so actually, I have to finish my talk now because my <laughs> answer, already I got an answer. <clears throat> so uh, later, uh, even though I failed in my uh, first attempt to learn martial arts through books in my uh, first trial, but I didn't give up an idea to become a martial artist. So when entering after some time the university, I had an opportunity to learn martial arts from a real master, the Kwang Seok Kim. Coincidentally, he is a successor of the Muyo Tongji, or Comprehensive Martial Arts Manuals, illustrated manual of the martial arts compiled in 1790 in Korea. So his teaching reminds me of my old days and I finally can enjoy learning martial arts in relation with the manual. Now I introduce what Muedo Tongji is. This book is considered as a martial arts bible in Korea. Some of, my, uh, some of you might already heard of it. This manual was compiled by order of King Jongjo in 1790, Joseon, Korea. It is composed of four volumes and uh, extra one volume with a Korean translation. So you see uh, five volumes now. And then it looks like this inside. So in this manual, you can find this kind of uh, diverse martial arts. 
And uh, so you see the all kinds of uh, sword magic spear, thorny spear, moon saber, even grappling techniques. So in this manual, the four volumes, the first uh, volume, then uh, like introduction part, history of military affairs, biographies of Qi uh, Guang and uh, Mao Yuani, the Q&A sections, references. So to look carefully, first uh, long spear, bamboo spear, flax spear, trident, spear on horse, thorny spear. And volume two, double-handed saber, sharp saber, Japanese sword, sword combat. Volume three, Edmund sword, Silla sword, twin sword, twin swords on horse, moon saber, moon saber on horse, shield. And the volume four, fist low, staff, flail, flail on horse, polo, acrobat on horse. <coughs> Did you find some, something interesting features through this uh, list? Polo. <laughs> polo, yeah. Polo. Polo is like an like a Asian style, similar way, but slightly different, yeah. And anything else? Sorry? That's a lot of material to study. Yeah, exactly. To be a master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, probably it doesn't come to you clearly with this list, but if you look carefully the contents, then you can find, uh, you know, the color, I made a little bit dark colors, volume two and volume three, because you can categorize them together. Volume 1, mostly spear. Volume 2 and Volume 3, sword. And Volume 4 is staff or something like that. So the category of categorization of this uh, manual is uh, three. Strike technique, slash cutting technique, and strike. Sorry, thrust, cutting, strike. So three categorization. So this is a reflection of time in late 18th century when the Buyeo Dobo Tongji was compiled. Relatively, the importance of all other martial arts were getting decreased, except for swordmanship. So because of the development of technology. So at that time, musket was becoming more popular. So that was the main weapons. And the swords were like a secondary for self-defense. So mostly like a sword technique. So half of the contents are sword. And the, the other martial arts are becoming more trivial. And the other feature of this categorization of uh, martial arts, um, so I just explained the categorization, three uh, the different categorization. So this classification doesn't give us a clear view, especially when firearms were introduced. This is um, what I'm saying. Before this Muedo uh, Tongji, there were two, like a long range weapon and short range weapon. So mostly like a ar archery, bow and arrow can be uh, categorized as a long range weapons. And then all others could be uh, short range weapons. Or long spear could be long range weapon, and then sword or staff could be a short range weapon. But once firearms introduced and then uh, becomes mainstream, then actually all others becoming short range weapon. So that's the reason the Muedo Tongji authors try to find out then how can we define or classify more clearly. So that's the reason why they developed these three uh, categories, and. Uh, even uh, before the 16th century in Ming China, General Qi Guang he wrote uh, 18 chapters Jixia Xinshu, and then he mentioned long range weapon and short range weapon, and then he categorized long spear as a long range weapon. And then after 30 years, when he compiled, revised uh, 18 chapter Jixia Xinshu into 14 chapters, and then he changed it. No, no, no. Long spear is now short range weapon. So at that time already started. And then, but interestingly, General Chi just uh, used the same theory to this uh, 14 chapter Jixia uh, Xinshu. And then it's explaining a uh, firearm, something, but content is uh, still like a spear was there. So, um, 
so the, in the weird autonomy, in total, 24 martial arts. So you, now it, these 24 martial arts belong to these three uh, different categorizations. So in fact, today, many people know of, about this weird autonomy. So now you know, I explain. But this popularity has gained the last two decades. Before the Muedo Botongji, before that time, Muedo Botongji was not well known and even not uh, appreciated by Koreans. Uh, in 1990s, it was uh, underestimated as a copy of Chinese martial arts, still like a nationalistic uh, atmosphere, then, uh, and some are looking for real, genuine, authentic Korean. And then Muedo Botongji was uh, just a copy of Chinese martial arts. So this kind of uh, discussion, uh, debate was uh, ongoing at the time. Um, so, but uh, yeah, just uh, last week I uh, heard the uh, news the Muedo Tongji was registered as a World Heritage of UNESCO, something like that. So at the time we couldn't imagine uh, Muedo Tongji would be like that. There's uh, all kinds of, uh, like, uh, we don't know what it is exactly and then even underestimate. But these days, it's becoming more kind of uh, the really good, uh, important uh, record material. So now, uh, I will show you one chapter so we can see it more clearly. Um, so the same format, so all the martial arts under this uh, format. So uh, I took uh, one Bongukom, uh, it's a Shilla, the kingdom sword. So first part, um, so the Bongukom, which, uh, this first part is an introduction which has uh, general information related to art. So, for example, origin, history, or dimensions of uh, the weapons. So, these kind of things in the first part. And then, next, individual techniques are explained according to the sequences. So, the second, that one, individual techniques. And then, third part is a complete diagram. So, which posture or which technique, and next, and next. So, it's this kind of a sequential. Form. And uh, the fourth one is more likely uh, the chart, complete chart, and then every posture is with uh, the real the drawing. So it's much easier to see the whole picture of the techniques, how it is executed. And uh, the page is like a reduced, they use a reduced scale. So actually you can see the distance and this more the accurate uh, way of uh, description. But uh, you know the many modern Korean martial arts, Taekwondo, Hapkido, Dangsudo, or Hedonggondo, all actually claim they are like a descendant of this uh, the Muedo Tongji. As uh, we already talk about this kind of like a to prove kind of authenticity, but actually they don't explain. They cannot explain how it is connected. Then they only just claim, oh, there's a old manual, classical manual, and we are doing that one now in these modern times. But there's only claims, there's nothing to, uh, so even the, they, do, they don't, they cannot explain what this exactly this technique means or how it's connected or. So finally we can see this, how the martial art the, uh, of the Muedo Tongji is look like. So the, it was uh, happened in uh, 1987. So Master Kim was the first who introduced to the public the Muedo Tongji martial arts, which is called uh, Shipalgi because it's based on 18 hours. He published a book of practical analysis of the Muedo Tongji in 1987. So this was the first. So now people can see, okay, that makes sense, or yeah, whatever. Uh, and he performed the martial arts 
In the same year, since then, people can appreciate the art actually had been teaching the, this hip hop since 1970, but at that time, it was like a, people didn't appreciate at all. Oh, it's a Chinese martial arts or something like that. Yeah? So he emphasized hip hop as a Korean martial arts, but it wasn't appreciated in that way. Most people wanted to learn Chinese Kung Fu, like me, when I was young. <laughs> um, not interested in Korean uh, traditional martial arts. Even he tried in many ways, but it seemed to be uh, impossible to make people understand. After performance, so this one, uh, the performance on the uh, brochure. After performance, uh, some university students came and started learning from him and organizing Shipagi club at the university, and it became a cultural movement in Korea. Also, students had many questions about martial arts, and uh, <clears throat> he had to answer every time, same or similar questions. So he, okay, I will write a book. Just uh, one time, uh, give answer. answer the, So he wrote this kind of book, The so Secrets of Classical Fist Method. So the classical theory of uh, bare hand techniques and uh, the practice as well. And Bongukgom, Korean Classical Swordmanship, 1995. And then Fundamental Guide to Korean Spear and Staff, 2002. So these are uh, elaboration of the Mueda Botongji. And as far as he knows, like a classical martial arts theory. So he uh, introduced this uh, to uh, uh, Korean society. So this is one story. And the next one, there's another man, Im Dong-gyu, who claimed to reconstruct martial arts of the Mueda Botongji. So he was serving double lifetime sentences due to his involvement in political case. So he incidentally encountered the Mueda Botongji while he was in prison. And he thought it's uh, important to um, import manual, and he started to study by himself and try to uh, reconstruct. Later, he started teaching what he reconstructed, reconstructed to other prisoners using a balloon stick as a training uh, weapons. And uh, uh, when he was set free with uh, other political prisoners after establishing new uh, democratic government, he decided to. Um, dedicate himself in the uh, martial arts uh, teaching. But soon he realized there's uh, somebody else who already uh, did uh, this kind of things with, uh, about the uh, Muedo Botongji. So now we have um, like a good example to compare. So one is considered as a successor and the one is uh, like a reconstruct. Uh, reconstruct. So let's call Master Kim and Master Lim. So, so in the beginning they met and they tried to um, cooperate, but as you can imagine, it's uh, <laughs> a little bit hard to uh, get along well with the... So Kim's students actually criticized Lim. So this is Lim's work in 1996 and with his students. So the Kim's student, Kim's group uh, criticized uh, the others. Uh, they are lacking in details, and even they don't know what martial arts are. In a way, it's true. Lim started uh, from the scratch, only with the books. And the manual doesn't uh, cover all the information that you need when you, uh, learn, you are learning from it. It's just a reference or a secondary tool to help your learning. Sometimes the informal knowledge is more important than practical knowledge when learning something new. Whereas Master Lim, the reconstructionist, criticized Kim's group, his style is not genuine Korean and looks more likely Chinese. Master Kim had relations with the Chinese martial arts artists and learned martial arts from them. So it's hard to believe this style represents the Mueda Botongji. Reversely, we are open to all possibilities, possible interpretations. We study a lot historical aspects and try to approach historical reality by testing it in a setting of a real situation. You are just repeating routines. That is uh, that tradition. So some, 
I think you are very much familiar with this kind of uh, debate. So Master Kim's side emphasized its transmission, authenticity, and more profound understanding, like a professional way of training. Whereas Master Lim's emphasized its open attitude, realistic approach, and more maybe Korean. Both seem to be hard to accept each other in many ways. Perhaps it should also be noted that this is not a case only in Korean martial arts circles. In a large extent, we often encounter this kind of controversies virtually everywhere. I noticed similar arguments between Asian martial arts practitioners and European historical martial arts practitioners. Asian martial arts practitioners emphasize the authenticity of transmission. Western martial arts practitioners emphasize universality of knowledge. Yeah, whatever, somehow different. <laughs> so what does it mean one person in a successor of a certain martial arts? So considering the whole system of Muyedo Botongji, we just mentioned, is it possible one person master like a 24 the techniques, skills? Master Kim, though he transmits most of the arts from the Muyedo Botongji, but some are not included. For example, Japanese swordmanship, he, he, he doesn't do. And uh, horse riding, he, he didn't have a chance to learn riding horse. He passed through like a Korean, uh, Japanese colony and the uh, Korean War. It's a hectic period, very hard. So then, um, how do we verify the, the legitimacy of his transmission of the art of the Muedo Botongji then, or can we discard his knowledge of martial arts because it doesn't cover or, or suspicious of his martial arts lineage. So I just show an uh, example with this. Uh, uh, so this is a twin sword from the Muedo Botongji. So it was same uh, the individual techniques, explanation, and the complete diagram and chart so there's a, the second line then uh, is called the initial retreat defensive postures. So actually, if you, if you follow this uh, explanation, uh, still a little bit hard. It's a well-made product, the Muedo Tongji, but still a little bit hard. Only the, it says, says only the name of postures. And then, uh, I just said, as I said, the initial retreat uh, defensive postures, you keep these postures and then turn three times and move back to the original position. That is the instruction. So this is not a practical part, but it's uh, very interesting to compare the, what happened in Korea. So I will just uh, show, uh, like I try to imitate some uh, examples there. So I will show you first uh, the reconstruction of the, how they did. So they have to start from the scratch. So they follow defensively. You know, I will start from here. <coughs> so here, so run and four and strike. So that's quite easy. Yeah, strike four. So here, run and strike. Yeah, and then next one, initial retreat. So. This posture here. So this is an initial retreat uh, defensive posture. So this one. And then, you know, three times. One, two, three. Uh, I can show you the others as well, but uh, like uh, this way. I mean, it's correct. <laughs> According to the instruction, they follow very clearly. And then uh, this, uh, so that, uh, okay, let's say that the successor of the, so what he did then, so here, this is same, but, so three times. Mm -hmm. After that, turning, then cowboy. So, yeah, I'm not saying which one is, uh, correct or authentic or but maybe we can have more understanding clearly. So that happened from a reconstructionist 
I mean, it's, it's in a way, it's just a reasonable way to following the instructions clearly, turn three times back, original position, correct. Yeah. So uh, that is uh, like a one way of uh, transmission and uh, some reconstructions. If it's uh, true, then maybe we can find this kind of some gaps easily. And uh, so the Weird of Tongji compiled in uh, 1790, but it doesn't mean the art were invented in the same year. Marshals already existed when, it's, when the manual compiled. There should be some reasons when it is compiled at a certain time, especially for the military manual like Muyo Botongji. So now I would like to uh, elaborate historical background of compilation of Muyo Botongji. Luckily, we can trace back the predecessors of the Muyo Botongji. So this is very rare case. So kind of archaeology of martial arts. So the same materials, but we can trace back in a different time frame. As a, uh, as a positive effect of controversy between traditionalists and the reconstructionists, the academia started being interested in this topic, martial arts history in general and martial arts manuals in specific. Since 1990s, there has been made a lot of academic achievements Especially, it is remarkable that two predecessors of the Muedo Tongji found in 1990s. So before that time, then uh, we just talk about, only talk about Muedo Tongji. So that was all. And then later, two uh, the, yeah, newly uh, found older manuals. So I uh, brought one uh, manual, uh, the reproduction of the manual. So. Like this, uh, you have to read it this side, this way. Yeah. I will. So like this. So the first manual um, was uh, illustrate is the illustrate manual of martial arts, 1598. So it was uh, actually it was in uh, in France. So the original copy is in France now. Yeah. And in Korea, we have only a microfilm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so another manual is this. So a translated sequel to illustrate manual of martial arts compiled in 1610, found in 1990 at Kemyong University Library in Korea. Uh, interestingly, this manual was not even known the name, so it seemed to Come out, coming out of out of nothing, really. Uh, another manual uh, yeah, I just said, and uh, there is another uh, predecessors of uh, Muyo Botongji, the Muyo Shinbo, compiled in uh, 1759. But uh, this is was not found yet. So hopefully we can see uh, someday. So we have uh, three uh, manuals. Uh, fortunately, the way of compilation of Muedo Botongji, which shows the time layers of each manual, so there are different signs like uh, the, the original and uh, the addition. So this is like uh, the way of old style. So they want to create new, but they want to take from uh, old materials. So. Uh, so this science, then we compare the, the other two, then we can find out what was in uh, this uh, new illustrated manual of martial arts, which is not found yet, so which is not exist, but we can compare these three and the uh, compilation, uh, the way of uh, the Muedo Botongji, so we can find out this kind of archeology span of martial arts. So, uh, in this respect, Korean martial arts manuals are a good example of the archaeology of martial arts, though it happened in Korea, but the martial arts development is connected to uh, others. Through examination of Korean 
manuals, actually we can get closer to classical Chinese and Japanese martial arts as well. Because the first Korean manual was inspired by Chinese, the Ji Xiao Xin Shu. So most contents from, uh, comes from uh, Ji Xiao Xin Shu, the first manual. And then there's another one, uh, Wu Bei Zhe, like a treatise on armament technology. And this one affected the Muyedo Botongji as well. So if we compare this one, then actually we can trace back the old Chinese. Uh, and then the contents, then there are some uh, classical Japanese uh, martial arts as well. So we can compare these uh, three uh, countries' martial arts through uh, martial arts manuals. Um, the Muyedo Botongji martial arts can be traced back to the 16th century. So when Japanese army invaded Korea in uh, 1592. It was a total war and international war broke in Joseon, Korea. Within 20 days, the capital city of Seoul was uh, collapsed. And the king and his cabinet had to escape to the border of uh, Joseon and China at the time. And then China, China decided to join the war and this war became ex escalated to Japan and the Joseon, the Ming allied forces. So, but at that time, Korea had an, um, the strategy based on the cavalry because the main threat was the northern part. Those are the cavalry, the Jurchens. So Korea is the same uh, in the distance uh, using firearms, close combat and uh, archery, and then uh, chasing after on a uh, horse. So it didn't work with the Japanese invasion. So that's the reason why Korea adopted uh, the Chinese uh, the military tactics and the system. So <laughs> like a, what Korea, and the, you know this uh, time frame, the 1598 and the 1610, 1750, uh, 1759 and 1790, this is uh, the the evolution of martial arts, so in the same place. And then first manual, as I said, just uh, explain. So in this uh, first manual, you see shield, thorny spear, long spear, trident, staff, long saber. So first four, first four, this uh, shield, thorny spear, long spear, trident was uh, the part of Mandarin dog formation. That was the most important at that time. So 12 people is a one uh, unit. And then using these uh, different uh, weapons together. And then even they uh, developed the body types. So what, what type of uh, people are the fit for which martial arts? So here, so first the shield and the thorny spear, both are like a defender. The for shield then young and middle-sized body with a high flexibility. And the thorny spear, then middle-aged man, big face, interesting. And the bigger body size with great strength. So big face like a like a intimidating the opponents. So they believe like this. And then uh, the long spear and trident, the, the both are like attackers. So long spear then strong mentality and physical power. And for trident and murderous spirit, spirit and fearless, fearlessness because of keeping away spears and killing the opponent. And then, don't worry, everybody can join this. Uh, although you are like a mediocre and obedient, <laughs> still you can do something. <laughs> willing to become a subordinate. Yeah. I'm trying to show how. Uh, Let's see the, how it works in uh, Mandarin dog formation. So you will see uh, this uh, first uh, flex spear, shears, thorny spears, long spears. 
So they are four. So they are main attackers. The last trident. Okay. So this is a Mandarin dog formation. This uh, so main combatant uh, ten, and then first this four defender, and the main attackers are the long spears, and then the backup men uh, two are tridents. So these weapons are not separate but interrelated. So interpromoting and interrestricting, which come from a traditional thought of five elements. So you like a. We will see so in practic practical level, the forms uh, show some insights how they are organized, especially considering what believe is that the form, the kata, is uh, reflecting reality, yeah, right? How can we tell so we can see uh, this reality from this uh, uh, manual. Let's have a look at uh, these features in detail. Roughly speaking, the target attacking area can be top or bottom, right or left. So you're using these uh, tactics in like a, you try to attack right side and then uh, you left to attack, counter attack, something like this. Yeah? So this is a very much a common way of uh, the strategy when you fight each other. So. You know, the, this uh, shield, he take uh, low stances for blocking. And then this one, do you remember? These two were defender in the front line. This one thrust upper part. So why he is uh, thrusting upper part, then the shield cover in front of him the lower part. So it's, uh, it's not the individual technique. So they uh, support each other, so help each other, so technical the manner. So why do we practice forms? Because they are believed to be practical and could be applied to in a real battle. So it's natural to imagine it has some value for real fighting. Sometimes it happens that people don't know the meaning of the forms these days. So you, you just repeat the same things and then uh, you don't know how it works. But it should be uh, works in the uh, in the, the right moment. So training is though uh, important. So this is an uh, example, a very simple example to show clearly how it works together. And then uh, this one, the, another, the next part. So same way you can see the both sides, the lower, higher, and then uh, they work together in and out. And more clearly, I will show you this. This is about uh, long spear and trident. So now you can see the even though individual training line, kata form, then start together it's the same way. And then you go all the way and turn, turn around and move back. So this uh, trident is a bag of man for the long spear. So he has exactly the same pattern. Of course, with a different technique. But they then, if you practice like this, then uh, when you work together, then it helps. You know how he moves. And uh, I, know can, I, I know how to uh, uh, make a the harmony movement with uh, his movement. So this is the way how they uh, practiced. And... Uh, yeah, this is uh, like a little bit, uh, they try to explain uh, interpromoting, so from uh, this step, then half the others, and then, uh, but this is a little bit traditional way of uh, uh, interpretation. So, you know, the, like they try to make some theory, but it doesn't make that much sense, so I'm not going to say, because, uh, Five element theories, and then there are like actually six, something like that. Yeah? And then, uh, I mean, one is not in the formation. So one is like a 
both way also. So a little bit uh, doesn't match. It clearly doesn't. Uh, it doesn't clearly match to uh, the situation. But anyway, theoretically, these uh, five elements, and then they try to explain uh, this martial arts in a more theoretical way. So after compilation of uh, Muye Jebo, you remember the 1598. So this is the uh, next one, 1610. Joseon government uh, noticed that there are some martial arts missing. So they uh, add. So that's the reason why uh, sequel to illustrate manual of martial arts. So uh, for example, Gwompo, bare hand techniques, they didn't add this one in the beginning because that was more urgent for Mandarin duck formation. So mainly those martial arts, they, they compile first. And then later, okay, now we need, uh, we have some more time, so we need to add more. So Gwompo, bare hand techniques, blue dragon, uh, moon so saber, and, oh yeah, here, and the staff with the uh, blade teeth, and there's another, like a hook spear, the same. And then uh, sword combat uh, techniques. So edit is, um, and then after a while, 1759, the uh, Muye Shinbo, so new illustrated manual of martial arts was compiled. So this one from six martial arts from Muye Jebo and added 12 the new martial arts. So in total, 18 martial arts. So Korean shipargi, and then uh, in Chinese they use this uh, similar number, 18. They call the shilpa fan wui. Then it's the same 18 martial arts, but the contents are different. In China they call the uh, different type of weapons. But here in Korea, we, when they call 18 martial arts, then uh, it's kind of generic term and the different techniques. So 18 different techniques. So and then. We just uh, are talking about comprehensive illustrated manual of martial arts, Muye Dobo Tongji. Then here, from Muye Shinbo, 18 arts and then six equestrian arts added. So long spear on horse and the moon saber on horse, flare on horse, twin sword on horse, and the kyokku, polo, and the acrobat on. So it's more like a, all are needed in the battlefield. So, so they added this. Uh, um, so, so now we are more practical issues. So when you try to reconstruct the art of the Muyedo Tongji, you have to uh, decide the, the length and the weight, the unit. Because in the past we have like a different uh, the units, like a, the Standard is a one chalk at the time, then uh, it could be 30, 31 centimeter or 21 centimeter. Yeah, sorry, it's, uh, they used like this kind of in a different area, then they applied in different, differently. So the long spear could be like a four meter 65, but ju chalk, then uh, 21 centimeter, then uh, you have to decide which, which one is uh, for. So the reconstructionists, they took it 31 centimeter in the beginning. Now they change it. They under, understand, oh, it doesn't make sense. So that length, and even bamboo spear, then 620 centimeter. But I'm, I'm not sure if you can find this length of uh, bamboo. Yeah, other flex spear. So most realistically, the right side is uh, the, the right side. And this one, then we see the, the correct. So overall length, if we apply like a chuk, then 137 centimeter. But the other one, then 201. I, last night I walked around here, then uh, here very long uh, double-handed uh, sword. I assume that like, German is a little bit bigger than Korean, I think. Uh, still, it's not that much long. I mean, yeah, two meters, then it's quite long. And then we consider the weight, then it uh, doesn't make sense for the Korean uh, the sword. 
the length. And it's really hard to find this kind of a, the long sword in Korea. <clears throat> so that is uh, the one thing you have to know. So there was some mistakes in the beginning when you reconstruct this martial arts. And then uh, another thing now. So here, this is uh, one posture from uh, Ji Xiao Xinshu. Then uh, there is a drawing and then uh, the verse about this technique. So in Ji Xiao Xinshu, you see only this. So you never know how it works or how it connected to each other. And so that was a problem. And then uh, we see the Muyed of Tongji. Then they used this posture in the sequences. Then you can compare this one and then you can find out. So that's the reason why you have to connect all this together and figure out the historical reality. And uh, another thing is, uh, I'll just uh, make a point clearly, like uh, Douglas Ward's uh, translation, I was inspired very much, but still I find something I don't agree. Like uh, in the previous one, uh, there's uh, this, this verse, there, a uh, yellow flower, Huang Hua, and then he uh, translated this uh, chrysanthemum flowers, but actually it's uh, the name of a man in the novel. So if you translate like that, then it doesn't, the whole sentence doesn't make sense. Uh, suddenly flower, yellow flower comes out and uh, yeah. But if you know the historical context, the general Chi Ji Guang took it from the novel. It probably is like a Harry Potter at that time. Very popular, and uh, so this uh, Huang Hua, this man can write uh, calligraphy, uh, two styles, for example, like a right hand you write English, and the left hand you write Chinese. So this man, possible, that one. So General Chi Ji Guang took it, okay, uh, somebody, this technique is using both hands like that. So he wants to emphasize. So another thing so is a similar way. So in the historical context, you have to find out or figure out that meanings. And that this one is uh, uh, in the Muyed of Tongji. The same way, uh, when they compile this one, so they, originally this one comes from a Chinese manual, but Chinese manual, the swordmanship in Chinese manual, they got it from Korea. So exactly they said, oh, we got this one from Korea. And then in Korea, it's already gone. You know, you don't know what it was. And then later they found it in Chinese manual. Oh, it, it used to be ours. So they took it back. And then from there, they developed these uh, forms. And then late 18th century, they realized, these days we practice like this, but actually there was all the record. So when they compile this Muyed uh, of then they put together. So you see the, this uh, different layer as well in the Muyed of Okay, and then this, uh, we see only like uh, this uh, pattern training or, but what did they do then in the past? So they, of course they test. Uh, the, in the afternoon, I just explained the, in the earlier period, then uh, they did a real fighting as a test with the, the boken, wooden sword, and, uh, and then uh, many people died while they are, they are being tested. So they realized, oh no, this is not gonna work. <laughs> while they are being tested, they died, and uh, okay, so they changed the system, so more likely two ways. So they call it dance and uh, pair training, so dance is uh, these days uh, kata, the performance. So you do uh, your form, okay, then uh, high, low, high, middle, low, and uh, high, high, low, low, or some this kind of uh, nine uh, the sections. And then uh, pattern training, uh, the drilling together with, with a partner, they does it only with uh, like a prearranged the pattern. So, but anyway, so both training they did, yeah? Okay, uh, so now I'm just closing down. So we see the in Korean, uh, in Korean uh, martial arts, in the modern times, you see a traditionalist and a reconstructionist. So I told you in the beginning, it was different. But later, you see, 
Can you tell which one is, uh, let's say, like a traditionalist and a reconstructionist? These days, you see this. So currently, there are many marshals around us. So what seems to like, we seem to like to trace back to the origin, which guarantee authenticity of the current art in some way. There is belief that the martial arts has been transmitted from the past up until now without change. But that's not true. But I prefer to think in the opposite way. In a way, we are starting from there. It's not, we are starting from here, something that transmits without change now, and then we going back to the origin. No. We, we are there. We have very little knowledge about martial arts. We just admit. And then we go back, and then probably there are more historical, in the, in the base of historical circumstances, then actually we have to get back there, not this point. So, so what can we learn for, uh, do for learning through martial arts manuals? Mutual understanding between traditionalists and uh, reconstructionists, like what we are doing here now. Transmission of art has a lot of benefit. You can get accumulated knowledge through direct transmission. Reconstructionist has also a lot of benefit. You can reach wider range of knowledge by allowing you to open all possible options. Why don't we take an advantage of both approach then? Thank you. No, I, I told you, this is, uh, there's a separate uh, archery manual, but this Mueda uh, Tongji in, in this case is all about short range weapons. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are materials about archery. Yeah, 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 there is. Um, why did they compile it at the end of the 19th, uh, 18th century? So, can you tell what, what the historical uh, circumstances were? Why they, they reinvented this art, or why they, they chose to? to so the 16th century, it was uh, like you need this art, uh, martial arts for the, the war. And then they uh, compiled this manual and then gradually you don't need this one. But still you need it for your own royal family. So it's more likely that purpose. And the reason why they compiled this one, standardization. So around this uh, royal the palace, there are five different military camps. And then the king noticed they are different. They are doing the same, but they are different. So try to make it standardized for test. So the, in front of the king, uh, they tested. They, are, they were tested. And then, oh, in our camp, we do like this. Uh, so this kind of a different... Uh, the situation that they want to make it a standard. And then that is aimed for the king, the power of kings. The, so that was aiming for that. But it was still a military complex. It was not. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So some guy who just fancied that. No, no, no. So no. It it's just... under commissioned by uh, actually government. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Yeah. Uh, this is a tactical question. I don't know if it was addressed in the actual books, but was it meant? Obviously, it looked like it was meant from a, a straightforward attack. But were there many of these units right next to each other? Yeah. Or was it meant? And did they have to worry about defending their sides, or how close were they? Yeah, I I cannot tell how how close the meters or something like that. But 
this is like a one unit and then uh, they have more space and this one uh, basically two lines but they change it the different formation variations so it depending on the which the ways the enemies comes in then uh, they divide and then uh, different ways so it's not only uh, the two lines so there are many different variations for your fighting. Yeah. Excellent. I have 100 questions in my mind about this, but we will talk about this. Yeah. Thank you very much again. Yeah. Thank you.